That's it. I'm ready. You ready? Oh, you're ready. I'm ready. Oh, darling. No, we're in the street. Man can't get arrested for kissing his wife. Come on back inside. Oh, you haven't forgotten the party, have you? No, you haven't forgotten about it. Carol, about the party, I wanted to explain. Oh, but Sarge, the party's for you. This is my vacation. This is our honeymoon. We don't want to begin it with a bunch of cops. You promised. I promised. You mean it. I really mean it. I am not going back in there. Sarge, you've got to come back to this table. Sir, no. Just a minute. They got there. There you are, Sarge. Come on, the time has come. Come on. Don't you let me down. Ah, thank you. Everybody's under arrest. <laughs> all right, all right, let's, let's fight that, huh? Welcome to the first annual Sarge Swanson Eden. In honor of this city's greatest cop. No, the world's greatest cop. <laughs> Wise Carol. <laughs> All right, now we're going to let Lou Wellman say a few words, even if he is from the DA's office. We let anybody talk. You really leaving? I've got my leave, and we've got two tickets on the 9 o'clock flight. Hey, we'll call. we put Arnie Bigelow away? Is it Sarge said we had the evidence to do it? <laughs> And now the cars across the street, we're about to make our getaway. Oh, Chief, this is Kenji Takeshi. He's an old friend of mine from my sailing days. This is Captain Dewey, the chief of detectives. All of us to meet the chief of detectives socially. He's met enough of them professionally. He was the second best smuggler between Macau and Hong Kong. You know, there's Would only one thing about some blowing the case. That's happened, uh, No, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, we didn't blow it. <laughs> Good trip. Sarge didn't either. Thank you. Win or lose, it's a pleasure doing business with him. When you're on his team, you better win. Thanks, Sarge. Uh, very well said. Very well said, Lou. And now, I am going to tell you... Oh, no. ...how Sarge saved my life. You do, and I'll break your ass. It was back in Korea. We Al. were both Marines. And... Al, Al, I've got something to say. Oh, you have the floor, Chief. By all means. Uh, relax, Sarge. This will be very brief. Good. That'll be the day. Listen, I'm going outside and get the car. I'll be right. No, no, no. I'll get the car. This Mayor is your Ronda. party. Honey, if we right. miss that air on your I'll get the Please. car. It's all right. They all say the same thing, so I'm not going to read them. Okay. okay. My speech is the same thing, so I'm not going to read that either. That's a relief. That's a relief. Sarge, uh, everybody in this town is very thankful to you, except for Arnie Bigelow, and he's not going to be making any headlines anymore, thanks to you, and, well, I guess that's what this whole evening is about. Thanks to you. Uh, <laughs> You know, you'll be like my mom and dad. They went to Atlantic City on the honeymoon in March, and I was born in November. Carol? <laughs> Carol? <laughs> Carol, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but uh, I was Sarge's roommate long before he ever knew you. <laughs> oh, we'll miss you, darling, and remember what I said. Yeah, all the time I'm in Acapulco, I'll be thinking of Atlantic City. <laughs> Bless you, darling. <laughs> yes, that's right. Sarge and I set out to be priests together. And we would both probably be priests today, only... Well, something happened in December of 1941. What was that? Well, we went to an early mass together, and uh, then the next time I saw him, he was a Marine. But it gives me great pleasure at this time, on behalf of the entire department, to present to Sarge Swanson our sincere appreciation. Hey! An 
I thank you very much for all of this. And I hope somebody will take care of these things and let me get out of here. <laughs> I got my own car. What, well, I give you an escort? Okay. okay. Hey, look, Sarge, I know you're on your leave, but I never received a report about those uh, tapes. I never sent you one. Uh-uh. Uh I got them in the back of the car. I'll get you a report. Well, that's a little irregular. So is my postponing my leave. You'll get it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You know you're not supposed to pick up strange <laughs> men. There's an ordinance against it. Well, I just repealed that. Get in. Perfect. What? This moment and that face. Oh, there'll be lots of moments. Just remember that when I'm old and ugly. That's no problem. Remember your browning? Come, grow old with me. The best is yet to be. Oh, my love, I love you. It's been a month now. The chief wants to see you. this old ferry bus back and forth for hours. They uh, picked up the man that planted the bomb. It's a fellow named Hawley. Yeah, I read it. Now the chief wants to see you. About Hawley. I think I want to see the chief, but not about Hawley. You know, it really might do you some good to get back to work. Sarge, I've known you for a long time. Now shut up. You've known me for too long for you to start preaching at me, Frank. When do you think I could see the chief? Anytime. About an hour. I got a stop to make on the way. Yeah, I know. 
Carol used to be crazy about straw flowers. She said, they last forever. There are a lot of them on her grave. Anything wrong with a man putting flowers on his wife's grave? No. Not unless that's all he does for the rest of his life. And we're holding Holly on an open charge. He did the job. We were lucky to get a prince from there. Bring his own to the car, and we traced parts of the bomb to him, so uh, he admits it. He said there was a guy named uh, Beamer. Gave him a thousand, described the car to him, told him to be around Mama Baines that night, and there'd be 10,000 more if it blew up. Then you've got a case. Oh, sure, sure. It hangs together. Well, you're no Beamer. He's just the kind of guy you'd hire to find somebody to do a job. And Hall is the kind of guy you'd hire. Hired hands. Who hired them? Who's money? Why? Put the pressure on Beamer. We can't find him. He could be dead. Well, what do we do? Send Holly up for a few years? He did the job. Never mind who ordered it done. He did it. What do you want from me? We want you to talk to Holly. Now. Well, we still have some leverage. Before he is arraigned. And if you don't get anything from him, then you run down Beamer. Do you know his friends, or maybe? No. Why, Sarge? Why? Because it's Carol? Or because you figure you can't crack it? Because it is Carol. And I'm afraid of what I might do if I did crack it. I don't blame you. I said the same thing about it myself. I don't even trust myself in the same room with Holly. Sarge, I have to respect your wishes. I'll give you something else. No. I'm putting in my papers, Chief. I retire. I quit. Well, that's the word, all right. Quit. And I don't want to hear the speech. Well, you are going to hear the speech, though. I said I don't want to hear the now, speech. let's all take it easy. Stay out of this. Mateo says, uh, take it easy. But he'll come around. Just to give him some time. Well, I am sick and tired of having guys pulling extra shifts. Just because the best detective we've got is too busy feeling sorry for himself. Is that all of it? That basket is full of active cases. You pick one and go to work. Now. Nice try, both of you. But with what I've got in my gut, I've got no right to carry a gun or a badge. Thanks just the same. I'm so tired. Please. Shall we have one more cup of mama's coffee? Sarge, Interstate Air's got an opening for a security director. I just talked to them. No field work, no cases, just, just administration, organization, handling men. Well, you've got to do something. Going back to the Marines, Sarge? I'm too old. According to some kid in the recruiting office, I could have thrown right through the wall. No, not the Marines. Sarge Steel holds ticket as first mate. Well, listen, we'll think of something. Perhaps we're busy making plans for man who already has plans. You have plans? No, not a plan. Just an idea. It's not even a new idea. An idea I gave up 25 years ago. The priesthood? <laughs> You're kidding. No way. No way. There's no age limit, is there? Well, not exactly, no. But you've been married. Uh, that's impossible? I mean, for a priest to have been married? Well, technically, no. A uh, priest's vow of celibacy begins when he enters the priesthood. Then a widower could become a priest. Well, but not this widower. Look, Sarge, I'm not knocking your life. I'm proud of it, and you know that. But I... I don't think it was the best beginning for the priesthood. And that's for you to decide? 
I'm sorry. Who would I see to get an answer? The bishop. In this diocese, Bishop Andrade. Can you get me in to see him? <laughs> Sarge! Well? What you ask is simply impossible. It's impossible. The point is that even if you remembered your seminary work at all, it, it wouldn't be sufficient. Yeah, but surely the church's truths are eternal and unchanging. Yes, in a sense. But there are still new discoveries. The priesthood is a, is a hard calling. Now, if a man studied medicine, and then, before graduating, he took up an entirely different life, would he, a quarter of a century later, be allowed to practice? Well, perhaps, if he studied. You see, the priesthood is no retreat. It is no sanctuary. It is a demanding profession. And what it demands more than anything else is involvement. Your Excellency, please, I have known this man since our seminary days. I can attest to his sincerity, his character. Yes, but not his vocation, nor his education, both of which, I'm afraid, are plainly deficient. Now, you can't take off the top of my head and look inside. You're wrong. Did I come here and say I went to the seminary once, I want to be a priest? You punch my ticket. Did I do that? May I apologize for my friend's over-exuberance? No. Now, what are you suggesting? I want to go back to the seminary. Do you know... That it'll be tough? It wasn't easy the first time. It's bound to be tougher the second time around. Yes, I know. Maybe I can't go around the track with him, but I want to try. I got chutzpah, Bishop. Ask anybody. A chutzpah is that quality uh, of Yes, I'm familiar with the term, Father. This is an ecumenical age. If I go the whole route, all four years, and pass all the courses, then I'm qualified, right? Educationally qualified, yes. Yeah. But your vocation. If I go through that ringer, you better believe there's something driving me along. And it's not the hundred and a quarter you pay your priest per month. Am I right? <laughs> well, we won't know that for four years, will we? think of getting a single room? And so, whatever its special quality, Parish school is, first of all, a school. Now, you gentlemen have had two years training here. Let's suppose that you're in charge of a parish elementary school, and you learn that a boy in the fourth grade is misbehaving every morning. What does this suggest to you? Anyone? Let's just one. It suggests a kid that's been gone without breakfast. In the sense in which such a question could be said to have a correct answer. That is correct. Could you tell me how you happen to know that? Experience, sir. You're a teacher? No, sir, a fourth grader. <laughs> this is the day of the sermons, and you will all be as brief as possible. I can only say it may help to consider that the others are all as scared as you are. And we will begin with 
Mr. Swanson. Please remember, Your Excellency, this is his first sermon. Well, it couldn't be any worse than mine was. I doubt that public speaking is really his strong fortune. We'll see. All night long, I've been thinking about what I would say today. I ask myself, who am I to talk to you? And why should you listen to me? And you have a right to those questions. You all know something about me. Things not exactly priestly. I've lived hard. I've been a boxer. I've been around the world a dozen times. I've been a detective and a widower. You might think I came here to repent and to forget. And you'd be wrong. Dead wrong. You can put part of your life in storage and begin a brand new one. But that part that's in storage, it's there. It's part of you. You collect memories, and those memories speak back. And you listen. You hear your own mistakes. You remember the moment that some human being reached out to touch you, to say, I'm here with you. Communicate. I'm trying to do it here now. Perhaps you were too busy to listen. And you wish that you could hear them just once more. A friend, a cop, touched my face just before he died. A wife whose voice still lives within me. Yes, I listen to the memories of them. And for the rest of my life, I'll share their love with each of you. I promise to listen to you. For if we truly listen to each other, then maybe even here on Earth our own souls will touch. will be in soon. Relax, Mr. Swanson. I think you know these people. Your Excellency, Mr. Swanson. I took the liberty of inviting Bishop Andrade to hear your first sermon. And a very good one for a first sermon, too. Thank you, sir. It was philosophically intriguing. And audible, I might add, even from the rear seats. I used to sit there. <laughs> well. Sarge, Father McGinnis passed away last week. I'm sorry. He was a good man. Yes, he was. You know, St. Ignatius Parish has always been a particular concern of mine and a very difficult assignment. What is all this? Your Excellency? You've lived in that parish. You know its special problems. Now, I personally selected Monsignor Terence to be the new pastor, for the time being at least. However, being rather young, he's going to require a knowledgeable assistant. That parish knows me as a cop. I haven't even finished the seminary. Mr. Swanson, you completed three years here, and that added to your previous training makes it more than six years. Now, if you feel qualified, I hope that you will accept this assignment. Now, look. These are people I know. 
I've lived with them. I got drunk with them. We thought you'd like to put away your things. I'm Father Terence, the pastor. You thought I'd be older. Don't deny it. You're Father Swanson. I was expecting you yesterday. Oh, I didn't know that, sir. I was only ordained yesterday, and That's I... quite all right. And don't call me sir. Can you cook? Well, let's go downstairs. Can you? Cook things. Very badly, sir. Uh, very badly. I was hoping I'd get an assistant who could cook. One of our many problems. Father McGinnis and I shared the cooking, but he did most of it. You'll understand when you taste it mine. You mind if I say something? In the Marines and on the force, I had people work for me who were old enough to be my father. If they forgot who was in charge, I reminded them. You won't have to remind me. Did they give you lectures on leadership? I didn't mean that to be offensive. No, of course not. And um, it does bother me that you're older. And probably we'll get along fine. How about typing? Do you type? Two fingers. Well, that's one more than I use. Suppose you try your hand at this. Minutes of the Paris Council. You'll have to decipher my handwriting, so it'll take some time. There's more furniture in the cellar if you need it. And you do. Meanwhile, if you can think of anybody that might be willing to come in and cook for us, It'd be a great help. How much can we pay? Oh, very little. And, um... I'm really glad you're here. Sorry. What? Your notes. There's a large oriental Do you tunnel. like orange juice or grapefruit? Orange juice, please. In the pantry. O.J. with the two straight up. Strips on the side. Coming out. This is Mr. Takichi. He's an old friend of mine from my merchant marine days. 
He's a good eater. But he's a great cook. You have one? Enjoy your breakfast, Fridays. Thank you, Kenji. I don't suppose he's a Catholic. No, but if we convert him, it'd be something. I don't think there's ever been a Buddhist conversion in this diocese. If he goes on cooking like this, he can convert me. I don't think he wants to. I made a, a quick list of a few parish activities. Hmm. You'll notice it's not all ritual and spiritual consolation. I see. Pass me the butter. Swanson has joined us. Father, would you care to have a go? I seem to remember when I was in a class like this, I used to have trouble with uh, carrying the zero. And I think that's the problem here. Two times the zero, it's zero. It's done. It's not right, Father. Two fives, two fives are one seven plus three. I'm sorry, Father. We're working in base seven. This is new math. Oh, base seven. Well, Patty, it wouldn't help you very much for me to give you the answer. I think you better work out the problem with your class and with sister. Carry on, sister. Now, would anyone like to help Patty with her mistake? That's it, Father. Is it okay, then, the folk mass? You'll have to let me talk to the Monsignor. Father. We got a real problem. He said no. You handle the music, let me try and handle the Monsignor. Suppose he won't change his mind. You've learned a lot of brand new songs. Well, you better make it, Sarge. It's tough to change the habits of a lifetime. <laughs> what can I do for you? Hear my confession? Okay, go ahead. Well, I mean, what do you mean? You want to hear it right out here? Why not? We don't need the box. We're alone. I'd know who it was anyway, wouldn't I? Shoot. Okay, uh... Forgive me, Father, for I've sent. My last confession was four years ago. 
I'm sorry for all the sins I've committed in my life, especially the sin of gambling. Still playing the horses? I didn't say it was horses. Ever since I've known you, the track has been killing you. It's not just going to the track. You can pick up a phone now. It's a whole trouble. That's stupid. Look, I don't want a lecture. You want some help? Yes. There's a young rabbi downtown who's got a little group. Five gamblers, and they're trying to cure each other. You want to make it six? If you say so. I said, do you want to make it six? Well, I want to. Do I want to? Do I want to hurt Kathy? Do I want to come here and have to talk like this to you? It's a disease. All right, there's one other thing I can do to help you, except I can't. Because what you just told me is between us, unless you release me from the seal of the confessional. Oh, no, you can't tell Kathy. She said she would I'm leave gonna me. I'm not going to tell Kathy. Well, who is it? It's nobody you know, and that's all I can tell you. OK. OK. Be a penance and a good act of contrition, and you won't read the sports pages until you can do so without picking up a phone, all right? Okay. Thanks, Father. May the Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to life everlasting. Uh, I'm hardly sorry. When are you getting dressed? I am dressed. No, you're not. I'm sorry, Sarge. I'd like to help. So am I. What's wrong with the way I'm dressed? I don't like it. Change it. Look, you're not even a cop anymore. Oh, and when I was a cop, I never proved you were making books. So now that I'm a priest, is that the idea? That's the idea. Priests get days off. They have hobbies. Would you like to become my hobby, Howie? I want him barred. I don't want anybody in this town to give him action. Well, that won't be easy. One man. Donnerty. Donnerty. Thank you, Howie. I'll see you in church. Thank you. Of course. But it is getting late. His bottle's cold. It's a girl. Maybe. No. Thank you. We're quite all right. Inside. Okay. No, I'd better carry her. Did you really make this? Old recipe. Been in family for generations. Your family knows how to live. You could use a little help. Parish council notes the dates are all out of order and I can't read my own writing. Could you hold it for just a few minutes? My pleasure. There. Mm hmm Do you have a typewriter? In office, across hall. Okay. 
。ああ、赤ちゃん。可愛い,いね。Offering me a job? We have no money.、Uh, we do have some room. I... I know. I'm thinking about it. Father, I can take shorthand. I can operate any office machine. I know something about computers.、I'm、very good on the phone. And you've got visitors. They're waiting outside. Hi, Sarge. Alex, you look wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. How's it going, huh? Well, I'm still learning, Al Nico. I'm learning too. Remember, you recommended him for Detective Second. He's acting sergeant now. Well, that's no surprise. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Father. I think you'd better call me Sarge. I don't think there's any way in the world that I could end up calling you acting sergeant. Sarge. About your wife's death. I thought you were handling that. Oh, I went as far as I could. I was going over the same ground. I guess the chief figured that a fresh new face would,、uh, you know. How's the fresh face doing? Lousy. No, no. Somebody paid Beamer to hire Holly for the job. We knew that starting out. That's what we know now.、And、Beamer has been seen since. It's probably dead. You can help us. Holly is getting out tomorrow. So soon. It's been three years. Nico thinks you should meet him when he comes out. He's being released from the prison rehabilitation center. It would be quite a shock for him to see you again. What do you think? Oh, I think Nick was right, and I think you won't do it. I think that you're right. I'm a priest. I'm a busy priest. Funny thing about Holly. He was supposed to be out three months ago. Only there was an accident. Accident? Yes, a machine crate fell on him in a prison shop. It busted him up pretty good. Well, maybe it was an accident. The prison people couldn't prove anything, anyway. It's possible. Sure. But what if it was not an accident? Suppose there is a contract out on Holly. How long do you think he's going to last outside? Well, we've taken enough of Father Sarge's time. Thank you, Father. Sarge. I'll get rid of him if you want. I was talking to Nico before, and I got the idea that what this office needs is some straw flowers. Do you think about her a lot? All the time. They want you to help, don't they? With your wife's case. You can't run away. True. You don't forget. No, you don't. Father, I'm so bad at words. I just wanted you to know that I know. I think I understand. 
Yeah, I think you do. Now, you let me do the work. Father. Father, this morning, while passing through the kitchen, I noticed your friend, Mr. Takichi, making formula. Later, I heard, uh, a baby. Now, are both these events somehow connected with the young lady in trousers who, uh, just brought me my mail? Her name is Valerie. She's an excellent secretary. And she's working in exchange for room and board for herself and for the child, whose name is Anne. Have they no other names? I'm sure they do. And Anne would be Valerie's daughter? I think so. But you don't know whether she's really married or who she is or where she comes from or what? I'm sure we'll find out. When? When she decides to tell us. And meanwhile? Meanwhile, we get some great secretarial help, which we need. And she gets a place to stay, if you agree. Well, I'm certainly glad you added that last. Father, may I change my day off to tomorrow just for this week? I have a trip to make, and it's personal. That's the first request of yours that I could agree to without wondering if I'd made a mistake. It's okay, Harley. How come you know my name? Do I know you, Father? Father? You ought to know me. You killed my wife. supposed to meet Beamer. Where? I told you. At Shelley's place. The day after. Only by that time I was in the bucket. Oh, Father, believe me, I can't help you. You can keep trying. No, I don't have to keep trying. I don't have to do anything. That's right, you don't.
you're free. Only you don't want that, do you? You know what happened to you in prison was no accident. What about those two guys waiting outside? Why? I don't know. Is it something you've forgotten? Something that somebody is scared that you're going to remember. It'll be a shame to get killed for something you don't remember. sleep in Mr. Takichi's room. Now, you won't leave the church grounds. I don't imagine anybody's going to bother you here, but if they do... Now, tomorrow, you'll dictate the entire story to Valerie. Everything that you know about Beamer. What he said, how he said it, what you said, what you did. Everything. Okay? Okay. Kenji, will you show him where he sleeps? What's to keep him here? Fear. How long? Long enough, I hope. Good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Hello. Your trip go all right? Fine. You should. I think so. Good. Come on in, brother. Did you tell Charlie Dawes and his group that they could have a, a folk mass? You said no, and I said I'd ask you to reconsider. And, um, when were you going to do that? Sometime when I figured you were in a good mood. I'm in a good mood right now. A folk mass. It could be beautiful. Or a mess. But there's only one way to find out. You want the kids involved. They listen to our music. We listen to theirs. Once. I don't know how I lose these arguments before I'm even aware the argument started. Think, Sarge. Father. They'll hear it in the back row. You don't like it. You sure you want a critical opinion from the wrong side of the generation gap? I asked the Monsignor about a folk mass. This sounds an awful lot like hard rock. No disrespect, Father, but like you're out of it. I could hardly hear the singers for the amplified guitars. Are they out of it, too? Hey, now, wait a minute, Sarge. OK, OK, father. Charlie, I've known you most of your life. You've got talent, talent enough to persuade me to talk to the Monsignor. So? So use your talent. Open your mind to let others persuade you, unless you think that changing your mind is a sign of weakness. That means no electric guitar. You decide. Only on the basis of what makes the best folk mass. And I'll back you up. And so will everybody else. Yeah, OK. We'll do it your way. Oh, no, no, no. Do it the right way. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. That's from Isaiah, Charlie.
That's exactly what he told the grand jury. Yeah. Yeah, I told him everything. Well, there's one new element. You said that Beamer made his proposition in a restaurant. You didn't tell the grand jury how he got there. Nobody asked me. I'm not criticizing. Valerie, would you read that part I asked you to circle before? Yeah. This restaurant had a big glass window in front. I was eating near the window when a car stopped in the bus stop, you know, and Vic Beamer got out. That's right. It just stopped and he got out. He didn't park it. Well, he wasn't driving. He got out on the curbside. And the car waited for him. Did you see the driver? Well, who was he? How should I know? I never saw him before. What did he look like? I don't know. He's just average height. Just average. How old would you say he was? Oh, about 40, 50. I don't know. He was dressed in ordinary clothes, and like a suit, or maybe a sports jacket. That's it, isn't it? This is what this is all about, isn't it? That's the gods trying to kill me. Would you recognize him if you saw him again? Yeah, I think so. All right. I want you to do something for me. Take this grand jury transcript. And also take this statement that you gave to Valerie. And read them carefully. Valerie will come up after a while. I want you to give her a whole new statement. I want you to think very, very hard about it and give her more detail. Did you get the make on that car license? Sure. Stolen and done. Just the way you figured it out. And the guys that were in it are loose. You should not have fallen in protective custody. Jail's not a very good place to remember things. I'm not safe. Not if you're right about those machine crates. Yeah, but you can't make him stay. Suppose he takes off. If he does, that's no concern of mine. I'm not a policeman. If I were, if I were an acting sergeant, say, and I knew there were a witness hiding out in a church for his own protection, and, and if that witness was foolish enough to leave the protective sanctuary, I would try to find this witness and convince him to come into protective custody, right? I might even pick him up as a material witness. I might just do that. This just came, special delivery. It's from the hospital for special surgery. I thought it might be important. Is it? It may be. Will you call Mateo? Ask him to look for Linda Sims. She's mm -hmm. 17, brunette, blue eyes. She's probably using her right name. Might start checking the waterfront, the hippie crash pads. There's no charge. Just Father Sarge suggests you call your father. Regret to report, Mr. Holly has departed. Why don't you better call Nico? He expected this. He'll know what to do. 
Are you going out of town? According to this, I don't have much time. Tell the Monsignor I went on a hospital call. Hey, that's the truth. I came 130 miles because you wrote me that you were dying and that you wanted to see me. Now you tell me you don't know anything. Don't play any games with me, Arnie. If I knew anything about why your wife died, I'd tell you, but I don't. I was in jail at the time. I had nothing to do with it. Why? You never really read that letter, did you? Not even the address. What are you talking about? I didn't send it to Sergeant Swanson. I sent it to Father Swanson, St. Ignatius Church. I thought you were a priest. I am a priest. Well, then talk like a priest and act. Act like one. Good. No, 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 no. Is it so unusual a man's gonna die? He wants to see a priest. No. But why me? Hospital's got a chaplain, any priest. I don't want to see any priest. You were an honest cop and a smart one. Smarter than I am, as it turns out. I got a question I want answered. An honest answer by somebody as smart as I am. <clears throat> okay? Okay. You're gonna operate tomorrow, Sarge. Yes, Mr. Bigelow. Anything for pain. I saw the reports. I got one chance in a thousand. It's still a chance. Oh, forget it. I used to be in the gambling business. I know what happens to guys who play thousand to one shots. Some of them win. Not this one. Sarge, you know what I was and what I did. So tell me, if I die tomorrow, is there something I can do now to help? I can only tell you what I believe. I believe in a merciful God who has the capacity to forgive those who repent. You gotta decide not on the basis that you're gonna die and you regret everything that you did during your life, but on the basis that you're gonna live and that it's gonna be a better life. If you can do that, I can't promise you anything, but I believe that whatever happens tomorrow, you'll be better off. That's the best I can do. Well, there isn't much to hang on to. You. You didn't tell me anything for sure. Honey, I don't know anything for sure. Hundred and thirty miles isn't so far to come. Good luck, Arnie. So long, Sarge. Father. You're right back. Hey, you found him. Yeah, very difficult. Went straight back to his old rooming house. Now, what's the matter? I don't want to go in there. Oh, come on. I explained all that. You agreed. Let's oh. go. I've changed my mind. It's for your own purpose. Let's go of me. Now, what's going on? I want a lawyer now. That's Harley. He's the one who set the bomb in Sarge's car. Yes, and I know my rights. I want a lawyer. Wait. Now, hold on. He served his time. He's been staying at the church. Sarge said he knows something. It's too dangerous for him to run around loose. Yes, I served my time, and I want a lawyer. Okay. Okay, okay. I want him protective custody. Well, that'll require his consent. Now, you don't get my consent. You don't get nothing. Look, as a material witness, then. As a material witness to what? To a bombing that happened four years ago that he's already served time for? Sarge is out of town. Couldn't we hold him at least until... No. No, no way. You can go. Go on, you're free. Honey, as a favor to, to Sarge, huh? He's been good to you. Holly, no booking. Nobody's gonna like you. I'm Holly. Wait a minute, you're making a bad mistake.
Don't move. Stay. Stay. Don't move, Holly. Accidental death, pure and simple. Run straight into the traffic. A truck hit him. Nine witnesses, including a traffic cop. Everybody who was close enough to see his face agrees that he wasn't looking where he was going. Like a man in a daze. But you said he was running. A man who runs without looking isn't in a daze. He's in a panic. What scared him? Beats me. It was okay when I arrested him. Came along nice and easy. He didn't spook until we were outside the chief's office. I don't know. Maybe the thought of going back in jail. No, he's been in jail before. Al? Who knows? He's dead, and he was our only chance. Was he? Now, look, Sarge. You made enemies in the Bigelow case. Somebody wanted you dead. He contracted out Beamer to hire Holly. We can't find Beamer. Holly's dead. And all we've got's a motive. What motive? Revenge. Who says? They were trying to kill you, weren't they? Sure, but maybe not for the reason we thought. Maybe it had to do with those tapes in the back of the car that I was going to listen to on my vacation. Those were just copies, Sarge. Nobody but nobody gets at those originals. Sure, I know. And they're spread through three floors of files. But, Sarge, that stuff was checked and double-checked by me and Matteo and half the team of the department. Yes, but not by me. Don't you see if the idea was to keep me away from that file, and something in that file would mean something to me? Um, that's a long shot. Yeah, it could be. A thousand to one shot? I'm sorry, I was remembering something else. Forget it, it was just an idea. There's no way to reconstruct that file anyway. How did they do it before? You say Nico and Matteo checked the originals of what was in the car. So they must have known. That time it was all signed out to me on buck slips. What happened to buck slips? They filed, along with thousands of others. When you draw material on a buck slip, you sign and you date it, right? Mm-hmm. Full name? Yeah. Did the police have a computer that scans signatures? No, I doubt it. Well, they must have one that scans fingerprints. Uh-huh. I can program it for a signature. You can have the file by tomorrow afternoon. Except that you're not allowed at that file. You're not even an ex-member of the department. I could be deputized. Hi. We've got the X file. We've got copies of all the tapes, and we have a tape recorder so you can play them. You want me to get you some sandwich or something? No, but if you'd like to take a long walk after a while, we can stick around. Okay. Mallory, how come you stay here? I bet you could make two hundred dollars a week anywhere. Two fifteen, take home. But it wasn't here. I'm sorry, you don't have to tell me. You mean that, don't you? I walk in here out of the night with Ann, no ring. I could be anybody. Maybe we just needed a secretary. Maybe that wasn't it at all. You'd simply help me if you could. like today if they didn't get the money like yesterday so I borrowed a hundred off a guy named Slim Elliot down at the pier hey they took him out to the end of the loading dock and they came back without him 
That's all I know. That much I could see. Where were you that you could see it? Upstairs in the building, across the street from the pier. But that's why I moved. You don't you fool around with those guys. Union you just... Hold on, hold on. But that was years ago, when everything was just getting started. 28 years. Not like today. It's a clean sport. Well, there are a few bucks pass around now and then, but this track is clean. We work hard. But you've never been approached by Arnie Bigelow. <laughs> way. I mean, how long since you ate? A while. I just don't feel like eating. You became a father late in life. I was born a Jewish mother. You'll eat. I want coffee and bagels anyway. Could I have some tea, please? <laughs> Isn't there such a thing as tea and bagels? <laughs> there is now. Forget the coffee and tea, Mama Ben. Just the bagels. Oh, you. Well, they're portable and they don't make crumbs. <laughs> eat every bite. <laughs> ever see your husband again after that afternoon? No. I heard from him. He phoned me at 11 or 12 that night, and he said it was at a parking lot, 4th and Sierra, that I should bring the money. Did you not... bring the money? I didn't have it. Nobody had it. He hadn't worked in three months. But he never mentioned Arnie Bigelow. Yeah. Who was that? didn't play that one. Discards. Bad pieces cut out of good reels. Blanks. Stuff recorded at the wrong speed. Static. Busy phones. Phones that don't answer. All right. I'll give it a listen, but I've got to be finished in time for the folk mass. No, you don't. I asked Monsignor, and he said that he would do it if you didn't. You asked him. I know I didn't have any right. But you've got a lot of faith. I'm in the faith business. I mean in me. I mean in you. I just want you to know that I'm here. I'm glad you're here. I love you too, Valerie. How you doing? I don't know. Listen, Al, Bigelow said something to me, and now in the paper, uh, about his being in the gambling business? Oh, before your time, Sarge. Maybe 15 years ago. Southwest Turf and Sports, a race wire. Nailed a few people on income tax, you know. And Bigelow? Well, we knew he was the head man, but uh, we could never tie him into it, not legally. Uh, it was my case, maybe I blew it. You figured it connects to the bombing? Who knows? Thanks, so. Al. I'm 
Sorry, we're unable to complete your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again or ask your operator for assistance. Yeah. I'm sorry, the number you have reached has been disconnected. Who is it? Won't be here for the folk mass? You handle it. Valerie said you'd be willing to serve if I can, and I can. Swanson? It's quite all right. A little unfair, though. To you, I mean. You encouraged them. What's wrong? Nothing you can help. Father, I've heard that answer many times. It's never been true. I'm sorry. Why don't you just say, keep your blasphemous mouth shut, Monsignor? You just said it. So I did. One more question. Is there any way I can help you without you telling me what it's about? Tell me what book I look into to find out what a priest does when he's got the urge to kill. What's a man do? You're talking about a priest. A priest is a man, Father. He feels everything any man feels. Love, passion, lust, rage, even hatred. We aren't expected not to feel emotion. We are expected to control it by using the intellect that God gave us when he made his men. It's easy enough to say. Hard to do. Maybe it's even impossible. Maybe impossible, I know. Don't you think I know? Father, I believe that every priest, sometime or other in his life, thinks he's been nailed to a cross. How he reacts to that tells us what kind of priest he is. Because if he can't handle it, then maybe he shouldn't be a priest at all. Do you understand? I'll let you know. Search. Could we uh, drive up the harbor road? I'm sorry, Sarge. You're not as sorry as I am. I figured one day you'd recognize my voice. When you called back today, I knew. Don't you want to know what it was about? That? 
that's up to you. Fifteen years ago, I was making, um... $8,100 a year. And there was the race-wide investigation, and Arnie Bigelow thought I had the evidence to tie him into it. The funny thing is, I didn't. $10,000 not to use evidence I didn't have. I took it, and I didn't do a thing for it. Was that so bad, huh? Was it? But there was that one phone call. One word in a pile of tapes I could not destroy. But who would recognize it? The wire service case ended and the tapes were filed away. Then, the loan shark thing started and uh, everything in Bigelow's file was active again and uh, by that time you were around and uh, take the North Island Road. You saved my life, Sarge. Aren't you going to remind me? the investigation, I kept you away from the tape. And then you took everything you hadn't seen. Sarge, I had to do something. So then you got Beamer to hire Hawley, and what'd you do with Beamer? Did you kill him, too? It doesn't matter. Wherever he is, I bet there's no extradition. commit suicide with somebody else's gun. Come on, Al. You came to my office before, you see. You were very depressed, very low. Oh, shit. I had never seen you quite like that. And after a that. while, you discover that your gun is missing from the coat rack, huh? You mention my depression to Nico and to the chief. And you don't suggest it, of course, but uh, somebody thinks of looking here. Go ahead, say it. Go ahead. What we are supposed to say at a time like this. You'll never get away with it. The Monsignor won't believe it. Mama Bain, Takichi. There are always people. What they always say after every suicide. He wasn't the type. And here. Well, it may just work for a while. Sarge! 
It's no use, Sarge. I've got to do it here, don't you see? It's no good anywhere, Al. Three killings. saw you in that car with Beamer three years ago. He never saw you after that until that day at headquarters. Oh, it was an accident. A lucky one. You would have had to have gotten him. I didn't trust myself in the same room with him. That should have been the tip-off. But somehow, I never thought of you, Al. Shut up! You want to shoot? When was the last recorded case of suicide at 30 yards? It gets dark at the end, Al. It got dark for Carol. Have you thought about the dark time? Have you thought about what comes after? It's not you, Sarge! I got no choice! Neither do I. Priest, Al. That's who I am. You've still got time to get away with it. We struggled, and I got your gun. You moved in to get the gun, and I pulled the trigger. But you're going to have to do it. Now, Al. No bombs. You're going to have to give it to me right in the face. It's important for a man to know what he is. What are you, Al? I thought I could do it. I really thought I could do it. Pick up the car tomorrow. Sarge, you didn't say a word about Matteo. What went wrong? What can I tell you? They're just a 
no perfect men, Nico, that's all. When he walked in, I knew. Yeah. Good night, sir. Thank you. Too. It's all part of living. But what then? Do you just go on? Isn't that what you did? You meet her husband, Yuri Crocker. Yuri, Father Swanson. Yuri. Peace. Thank you, Father. Thanks, Father. Welcome home, Father. Thank you, Father. Father! How'd it go, Charlie? You know, some people might consider it a cop-out. A cop-out? Well, there's a parish in San Francisco that has a rock mass. Rock mass? Well, we'll talk about it. And maybe we can convince Father Terrence. You all right? Yes, Father. I'm sure glad you didn't keep your blasphemous mouth shut. You know, I'm just beginning to understand you. But it may take the rest of the church a few years to catch up to us. 